Cetus is live now. Thirty seven seconds. It says it's live now. Well, I don't see your picture yet. I do. You see yourself? I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, uh, I am Rob, I am Robbie, and uh, Dennis is behind the camera. Say hi Dennis, wave to everybody. Uh, if you were able to see his fingers. Uh, we are coming to you from our home kitchen in uh, beautiful Sicha, Spain, uh, and we are the founders of Sweet Sicha, a candy store uh, that will eventually be open here in Sicha. Um, we're continuing our series of making chocolates at home uh, and how you can make them. Some people have asked, why are you giving out all your recipes and everything? Well, you know, during this time of uh, COVID-19, it just seems something that we can keep people engaged in. You can do this at home. A lot of people, though, probably might not be uh, making their own candies. Well, the ingredients for stuff that you guys can make at home are simple. There's a lot of uh, more detailed um, work that goes into a lot of the candies that we make, expensive molds and stuff like that. So tonight we are going to be making peppermint patties. Uh, there are not a lot of ingredients. Um, it is, uh, sorry, <laughs> it is powdered sugar. We've got some uh, coconut oil that we use. Uh, I know you're probably thinking coconut oil. How is it that it doesn't taste like coconut? The coconut oil that we use for our candies is raw coconut oil. It is um, filtered so that it is odorless and tasteless. So you get the effect of the coconut oil and the consistency of it at a room temperature for a, your, for a peppermint patty. And some other melt aways because the, the melting point is so low, it melts easily on your tongue. Uh, coconut oil, a little bit of Cairo syrup or cornstarch. We all know that we've uh, used that before. Here in Citrus, it's really easy to get at a Taste of Home, which is a little grocery store, uh, English products, American products here in Citrus. Um, what else? Am I? Oh, and chocolate, of course, we need chocolate. But before we do that, I was just finishing up my chocolate martini because we're doing peppermint patties tonight. I thought I would do I added a little bit of uh, peppermint oil, so I'm having a chocolate peppermint martini. Yummy! There's some extra for later. Uh, so, cheers to everybody, and uh, we'll start getting cooking. There's, uh, I know I said on our uh, post, we're going to have a couple contests. We actually had a contest just the other day for people who like our page. So if you haven't liked our page, make sure you do because we send out contests uh, for just exclusively for people or to people that like our page. And it was whoever shared the tonight's link, we were going to do a drawing. And the winner for tonight's is Victoria Beckmonk. Victoria, I don't know if you're online tonight. Hopefully you are. Hi, uh, congratulations. You are the winner of uh, yesterday's contest. You are going to get a sample pack of what we call our pillow mints. These are, um, we call them pillow mints. They're sort of reminiscent of the mints that hotels would leave on your pillow uh, every night, which seems to have gone by the wayside. We're going to try to resurrect that. Um, there's three different kinds, same as our, our chocolate bars, smaller, just to be left on your pillow. We have white chocolate, milk chocolate, and dark chocolate. So, Victoria, I will reach out to you later, get your address, and we will get that sample pack for you. We also have a contest for everybody for tonight, so hopefully you're paying attention. For everybody who shares, likes, shares, this vid streaming video to let your friends know that you're watching. We will pull. What's the matter, Dennis? Nothing. Okay. Um, for everybody who likes and shares this video tonight, tonight only, during the live video broadcast, to let your friends know that you're watching, we will do another drawing of one person who will also get a uh, Pillow Talk sample pack. A Pillow. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> pillow chocolate sample pack. 
So make sure you like and share. Um, sharing is caring, and we're trying to boost that. So, uh, peppermint patties. Peppermint patties are uh, not complicated to make at home for what you guys want to do. This recipe tonight makes about 20 or so peppermint, peppermint patties, I believe. Uh, first of all, we're going to start off with some powdered sugar. We're going to use two cups of powdered sugar. Again, when we post this video on our YouTube channel, we'll have the entire uh, recipe written out for you. Uh, I have one cup of powdered sugar in the bowl already, and then we're going to use a second cup of powdered sugar. Now, when we buy our powdered sugar, I had already sifted this, but you should always try to sift your um, powdered sugar, especially for candies like this, because you don't want to get bite into just like a clump of raw um, sugar and or powdered sugar. And when we buy bulk sugar, we get our powdered sugar in 10, 10, kilo, 10 kilo bags. There's often a lot of uh, uh, chunks uh, of sugar in it. So I had already sifted this, but when you get it, make sure you shift your sugar so that you're not getting a big bite of it. And then I said we're going to use uh, we're going to use coconut oil. So again, the coconut oil that we use is odorless and tasteless. We're going to use a quarter cup of coconut oil. And we need to get this a little liquid. Right now at room temperature it's like that. So we're just going to pop it in the microwave. You don't need to get it too hot. You actually don't want it hot. You just want to get it to where it's melting. So we'll do five or six seconds, maybe ten seconds. You don't have to melt it all the way. You can melt it halfway. The the um, transfer heat will melt the rest of it. So that was 10 seconds. See how we're doing here. Oh, that probably needs a little bit more in our microwave. All microwaves are different, so better to go on the side of less and add than too much and have it boil over, because that's just nasty. Do we know uh, who's on? Dennis, can you see the screen? Can you see anybody? If nope. There's any comments nope. happening? Huh? I can't see it. You can't see the screen? OK. All right, so that's just about all the way melted, melted through. And we are going to add, oh, I forgot something. We are going to add this directly to our powdered sugar. And then we're going to add, we're using um, uh, peppermint oil. The full recipe, if you're using an extract, calls for, I think, about four teaspoons for this, which I think is a little bit much. So if you were using regular peppermint oil, I would start with two, and then you can add. We're going to add about ten drops here, and then we're going to mix it up. And we'll taste it once we get uh, everything all mixed up and see how it is. And if we need to add more, we'll add more. The same thing if you're at home. Add two teaspoons, and then you can add, if you don't think it adds, if there's enough, you can add another teaspoon, taste it, mix it all up, taste it, see how it is, and then add uh, two more, another teaspoon at a time until you get to a nice peppermint. Now the coconut oil and the powdered sugar creates that peppermint patties have that texture to them. Um, it's not silky smooth, it's a little rough. Um, I don't know how to describe it. Dennis, how would you describe it? It's not really grainy. But it's, it's not grainy, but it's also not silky smooth either. Um, the mint meltaways that, that we do uh, mostly around the Christmas time because it gets too hot. Those are a, a mixture of coconut oil and white chocolate and mint. And those have that silky smooth texture that go along with those. So I am just going to pop in here and see if I can get some comments from anybody. Sorry, folks. Um, we're also going to use some Cairo syrup. Kero syrup just gets it to a consistency uh, that we can 
work with. We're going to use gloves today. There we go. Cherie, hi Cherie, how are ya? Uh, let's bring this full screen. Turn on my mute myself. Okay. And we're going to use gloves today because we're going to be using our hands to mix this up and the coconut oil gets things really greasy. So you're just going to mix it up until you get this like sand consistency. You can use an electric mixer. Actually, I forgot to use an electric mixer. Uh, it's a little quicker. But if you're using an electric mixer, start by just without the power on, just mixing it with the beaters. Because if you turn the beaters on in a bowl full of powdered sugar, you will just get an explosion of powder all over the place. And if the uh, food and drug are not, if the uh, narcotics team came in, they might, uh, they might question you with all the powder all over the place. So just be careful. You've learned this from experience. <laughs> I've not learned that from experience. <laughs> There we go. Hi, Virginia. All right, so we're just going to mix this by hand until we get it more crumbly and all together. You're going to have to show it because we're not moving. Okay. I don't know if people can see that. Can mm. you see? Yeah. Dennis? Okay. We're going to mix it by hand. It's all crumbly like now, just like sand, sort of like a wet sand. So now we're going to add. We'll start by adding like a tablespoon of corn syrup, glucose, depending on where you live, uh, in what country, it's called different things. In the U.S. it's mostly called corn syrup. You can order glucose online or you can get corn syrup here in town at a taste of home. So I just want to remind folks for our contest tonight, if you're watching, uh, make sure that you share that you're watching with your friends, and one lucky winner of everybody who shares tonight, like and share the video. One lucky winner of folks who liked and shared our video will get a pack of our uh, sample pillow chocolates. All right, so that's coming together a little bit more, but I still want it a little uh, not as dry, workable. Uh, we've got Stacy from Wisconsin. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Rob and Alessio. So these are the cakes you got in Amsterdam. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, Rob. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> When it starts to come together like this, we're getting fairly ready for them. Yeah. So this is about the consistency you can squish it into a ball. Like Play-Doh. Like, yeah, maybe a little drier than Play-Doh, because it does fall apart a little bit. You don't want it too wet, because then it'll be too wet inside, inside the chocolate. Once we, uh, so that's just about perfect. Okay. Now, we're going to... Too wet, if it's too wet. As Dennis is reminding me, um, if it's too wet, you add more powdered sugar. It can be a vicious cycle, so just little bits of each at a time. It doesn't take a lot of powdered sugar to get really soupy. Um, we're just going to, we added about 10 drops of the essential oil. We're going to taste it. So we're going to add... Speckle more. I don't know what that word is. <laughs> it was like about another 10, 10 drops or so, I guess. Um, Shuri. Uh, Shuri is asking, how did Sweet, sweet Sea just get started? Well, um, Dennis and I uh, moved here from LA. Before that, we have always, we've been Dennis's. Dennis's family's caramel res recipe uh, was is a really great candy recipe for caramels. It's probably one of the best 
and we would make them at Christmas time for our friends. And everyone had always said, why are you not selling these? Um, due to, I guess, time maybe, we just never really did. We also started making other candies, like uh, English toffee, which actually is one of my favorites, um, and a few other things. So move forward a whole bunch of years. I'm just going to taste it and see how we're doing on the mint side. All right, a few more. And then we'll be good. So fast forward a whole bunch of years and where we've moved to Seaches, uh, we have our vacation rental uh, up and running. We're looking for more things to do. We start making caramels for friends and they're like, oh my God, these are amazing. And we're like, okay, maybe it's time that we start a candy company. Um, so that's, that's how we got to here. In December, uh, we filed uh, in what they call here in Spain, Autonomo, and then we patented the logo. Uh, I got all the websites, and we started looking for space. So now, during COVID-19, we don't have a space right now. We're looking at uh, wholesaling, uh, selling through a couple of uh, stores or restaurants here in town. We're very close. Right now, the only thing that's slowing us down is the, right now the only thing that's slowing us down is we don't have the labels and all of the, we have most of the packaging, we just don't have the labels and stuff for it. So as soon as that comes in, the post office is a little slow, but as soon as those things come in, then we'll be uh, able to, to take it to market, I guess. Okay. Um, Dennis, can you get me the... The pour, what I use for the peanut butter cups. Shot yeah, the shot glass. Okay. You may remember this. We use this for our peanut butter cups. This is also a perfect size if you're at home. You can do this two ways. You can make little patties in your hands like this, which I don't know. I like to have them a little more uniform. These come out kind of all mm -hmm. over the place. Or you're a, you're a candy company. <laughs> <laughs> I like them to be a little prettier, I guess. So you're just going to scoop up a ball. You're going to press it down. You can use a rolling pin as well. You want to get it to, I would say, a little more than a quarter, but less than a half. <laughs> inch patty on your board. We're going to use the larger of the two ends. Because of the oil, it shouldn't stick. And then you have a perfect little patty. Put it onto a tray which has lined with parchment paper. Just like that. I'll do a little more and then we'll uh, we don't need to do them all right now. Again, just get it into a ball. And again, if you're, if you're feeling that the dough is a little too dry, you can just add some more uh, corn syrup to it. Not a problem. These will last. I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but these... Looking forward to the caramel. Ah, so I, I know I started one conversation. So uh, Rob, looking for the, forward to the caramels. Yes, they are actually wonderful. It, it won't be a show that we will do live. We'll actually uh, videotape it and edit it because it takes about 40 minutes of constant stirring. And as entertaining as I am, <laughs> I don't really think I can, uh, keep you guys, these are a little bit thicker, I don't really think I can keep you guys entertained for 40 minutes while I'm uh, stirring a pot of, chocolate, of uh, caramel. So 
but what I will do after we make the caramel, caramels. So here we go here. I just made six of them right now for tonight. You can put this away. Once we clean up a little bit, once we have the caramels made, I will uh, will do some yeah. enrobing in chocolate and we'll dip them in. Pull a Julia Child. I'm doing this. child right onto the floor. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> this is Julia's child. Bon appetit. Eat more chocolate. Um, so what you want to do after you have them all pressed out, just like this, we're going to pop them in the fridge. Uh, I know we tried this the last time, but we're going to try it again. Dennis is going to help. All right, there we go. Just pop them in the fridge just like that. I'm going to take off my gloves. And now we're going to talk about chocolate. Um, Margaret, Margaret wants to know what kind of martini tonight. Uh, it is a mint chocolate martini. I just put a drop of the essential oil in, uh, and then we use white and dark chocolate liqueur. So no vodka. No vodka tonight. Nope. And a little bit of cream. So now we're going to go to the enrobing part of the chocolate. We've done this before, but we'll do it again. So I've often talked about what uh, chocolate that is not tempered. So the other day I made some mints for the end of, end of today's show. Uh, I made some mints, melted some chocolate, dipped them, and then, as I said, you can always save the extra. So I did. This chocolate was tempered. It was perfect. It was smooth. It was wonderful. You'll see it on the, on the other chocolates. But I actually left it out in the sun, and it melted. And I thought I was going to just scrap it all, but I thought, no, this is a great example. So this is chocolate that has become untempered. So the butter, the chocolate uh, fat, chocolate uh, butter fat has become unstable, and it comes to the top. It's called bloom. So when your chocolate blooms, there's nothing wrong with it. If you leave a Hershey bar in your car and it melts and then it comes back and gets hard or any other chocolate uh, it will do this usually unless there's stabilizers put in it or an oil put in it um, this is perfectly fine chocolate the only thing that you might notice uh, the taste is fine it just doesn't look pretty and if it falls out of temper enough and there's enough separation of the solids from the butterfat, it could feel a little crystally to the mouth. It won't have that super silky, smooth texture that we like to put out in our chocolates. So, with that, I let it get hard again so that I can show you guys. Now, you can still use this. Just melt it right down. Actually, I already have some chocolate ready to melt. So, you would just crumple this up put it into a bowl, microwave it, melt it down, and then use your tempering chips to throw in to temper it, and it will come back and you can use it. Not a problem. Oh, hey, Mike. My cousin Mike is on. Hey, John. Uh, hey, Greg. How are you guys? Nice to see everybody. All right, so for enrolling our mints, which are in the fridge, I'm going to use about a cup of, we use a blend of 50 and 70, so it's about a 60% chocolate for all of our dark chocolate uh, enrobed uh, candies. Our chocolate bars is a 70% chocolate, so it's a little more bitter than, bitter depends on, you know, I think it's more bitter. I think the 60% is a little smoother for a chocolate covered um, treat. So we're gonna take about a cup of chocolate, just put it in the microwave again. We're going to temper this, so we need to melt it. So first go around, we'll <clears throat> excuse me, do for 30 seconds. Oh, does my hair look like that? Oh, good God. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I shouldn't be touching my hair. I know. Um, <laughs> we haven't been to the, I guess we're going back to the, eventually I'll be able to flip it. We're going back to the Sean Cassie today. It's parked down the middle and everything goes back. Hey Richard, nice of you to join us. Oh, hey Rosanna. Alright, so that was 30 seconds. When you first go around, it's not going to do much. You can just shake it around. And we're going to do it for 30 seconds more. Are the chocolate cherries ready? Um, here they are right here. Are they ready yet? Uh, I opened them up the other day. They're, the centers are soft, so they're getting there, but it's still going to be a little while. I'm trying to find an enzyme here in Spain that will hurry along that process, but I'm having some uh, difficulty in the kinky world of uh, getting that. And translating into Spanish. And translating into Spanish, and you know, people are like, what is this? I don't understand. So now it's starting to melt a little bit. We're just going to give it a little stir. You don't want to get it too hot, so you don't want to burn your chocolate. And then we're going to go again. I'm just going to do 20 seconds right now. Um, so they're not ready yet, but that doesn't mean you can't eat them. So the center of these will just be that soft, white, um, fondant texture, uh, as opposed to the completely liquid texture. Oftentimes, if you buy uh, cherries at the store, they'll, they'll be in that in-between stage, because the, the chocolate makers want to rush them out to market. Um, but either way, they're still good. So, Rob, as soon as I can get you some, I will. How's that? All right, now our chocolate still has some chunks in it, but it's warm enough where it's going to melt the rest of the chocolate in there. So we're just going to mix it around until, it, uh, until the rest of those bigger chunks melt up. And then, so our tempering chocolate bits, you, what you do is you just take the chocolate, the tempered chocolate, the pieces that were in here, not, you don't want to use something like this, because this has fallen out of temper, so it won't train this on how to temper. So your bits, your tempering bits need to be chocolate that's, that's tempered. You just take the candy bar and you crunch it up into really small pieces. So that's that's what we've done here. All right, so everything is all nice and smooth in there. And it's the the recipe to temper temper chocolate is uh, one third to two thirds. So if you had three cups of chocolate that you were going to temper, you would melt two cups of it and you would keep one cup out. And this would be that one cup. We're just going to add it in a little at a time. And what you're doing now, again, we're tempering the chocolate, but what this does is it lowers the temperature of the chocolate and it starts, I think we've talked about this before, the crystals, the butterfat crystals in the, the bits here are all in a, uh, I think they're called beta crystals. There's seven types, I think, of chocolate crystals. I know I should know that better, sorry. And we want the beta crystals. Those are the nice, smooth, silky, everything's in a line crystals, which give you that glossy texture, that uh, snap when you bite into it or break a uh, Hershey bar or a chocolate bar. I should keep saying that. When you break a chocolate bar, you know, if you break a chocolate bar and it just goes ink, that means it was never tempered or fell out of temper or has some oil in it uh, to help keep it stable. You might, I, without saying the brand name of the peppermint patties, the larger peppermint patties, uh, you probably all know who I'm talking, what I'm talking about. They have that really, really thin coating of chocolate on them, that dark chocolate which is shiny and glossy, and it looks pretty. Uh, that 
is not good chocolate in my opinion. I actually was watching another video of a woman who was making something and she was tempering her chocolate and this was, I didn't know it was still common, uh, it wasn't actually that old of a video, but she added paraffin wax. Chocolate companies of long ago, I don't know if they still do it, probably there's oh, some that do, would add paraffin wax to their chocolate to help stabilize it and liquefy it so that they could get a really thin coating on things like peppermint patties and other chocolates and stretch out their chocolate. And then it keeps it from falling out of temper when it's in package. So it always looks nice, but half the time you're eating more paraffin wax than you are chocolate. <laughs> Dennis just gives little chuckles behind me. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get comments on that one. Um, my John, well, since I used to work for a chocolate company, you should probably watch it. Oh. <laughs> Steve, oh, cousin Richard. Hey, Richard, how are you? Zanna Shore, Sonia. Oh, Sonia, my sister in Florida. My sister in Florida is in the uh, healthcare uh, profession. I'm sorry, Dennis? Social. Psychiatry. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, and actually, a lot of our friends are. And every night at 8 o'clock here, we clap to all of the essential workers, all of those workers who. Uh, can't go home because they keep infrastructure running and operating, healthcare, trash, grocery store workers, the mail service, all of those folks. Um, we have a lot of friends that are in those professions. Uh, my sister Sonia in Florida, we have our friend Ernesto in New York, Anne in California. Um, I know I'm gonna forget people. I had a list, but I didn't bring it out here. So as you can see, as the chocolate cools down, it's getting thicker, it's getting a little glossier, it's taking longer for the tempering chocolate bits to melt. This is a good thing. So this means we're getting close to the chocolate being tempered. Um, who else do we know? Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Glenn in California is a mail carrier. or. Was. I don't know if he retired, but um, he may be back at work. Um, anybody else? Oh, Leo. Hey, Leo. How are you? Nice, nice to see you. All right. And to see if our tempers, if our chocolate is tempered, this actually might not be it. You can also use a piece of partnership paper. I do the knife. You just tip it in a little bit. Try to shake off most of it, just so that you get a coating like that. And we're gonna put it aside, not for 30 minutes, but for three, and see if it uh, starts to harden up. If it starts to harden up, it's tempered. So what's gonna happen is it will get satiny smooth on the knife. The reason why you check it on a knife is it has air circulation around it and it can uh, temper and cool down a little better on its own. In here, it will take longer, and on this, it would take longer. But you sort of want that glossy, in the bowl look, not too runny. This might be a little too, this might be a little too runny, but we'll see. Last week, with all the rain here, we had four or five days of just solid rain, a lot of humidity in the air. It was it was difficult to temper chocolate uh, that I was making last week. So weather definitely affects things. So just just be patient. And once you get it to the point where it should be, it's wonderful. Leo's good. I'm glad you're good, Leo. <laughs> So has everybody liked and shared the video? Remember at the end of end of the show, actually we might not be able to do it right at the end of the show. Oh, Laura, hey Laura, what are you making? We're making peppermint patties. So we already made the patty inside and right now we're just tempering the chocolate so that we can coat 
the, the patties. Uh, remember to like and share. Sharing is caring. The video, and out of everybody, I get a report of who shares are, are the Sweet Sages links. So at the end of tonight, after everything is done, I will look we'll, and we'll put all names into a hat and we'll do a drawing and somebody will win a sample pillow chocolate pack, which has white chocolate, milk chocolate, and dark chocolate squares in it. Actually, I can see we've been about uh, just over two minutes now. And I can see that we actually have achieved temper in our chocolate. I don't know if the camera can pick that up or not. It is uh, hard down here, so it's tempering. Actually, I can touch it and nothing happens, which is a good thing. Uh, towards the end, it's getting there. Oh, actually, even that's almost hard. So, this means that your, top, your chocolate is tempered and you're ready to dip. It actually went a little smoother. I was expecting it to be a little longer today. So we're going to take our mints out of the fridge here. Excuse me. All right. So our... So our mint uh, fillings, they've stiffened up a little bit. They're not oily on the bottom. They're not sticking. Make sure that you're putting them on parchment paper because if you don't, they will stick to the metal tray and then you'll need to pry them off with a knife. You break them. I actually did that the other day. <laughs> so don't make the same mistake I want. We're gonna get two small quirks. I'm assuming that most people don't have chocolate dipping forks. Um, so, like you at home, I'm going to use regular forks and not chocolate dipping fork. Those aren't regular forks. So, all right, these these are I don't know do you tapas know them? tapas forks, or dura <laughs> forks, whatever you want to call them. You can use little regular forks, little salad forks as well. I'm going to use these. <laughs> So our, temper, our chocolate is tempered. And we're going to dip away. Now your, these are going to get dipped twice. Because they have, so you throw it in there, pick it up, tap it to get all the excess chocolate off. It also gets out little air bubbles. So if you see a little air bubble coming off, up to the top, you can pop it. Continue tapping, then you're going to just wipe off the bottom from the fork and put it onto the parchment paper without making it slide. So you want to slide it off the fork onto the parchment without it moving because then on the parchment, break down. Because if, you, if it slides on the parchment, then it gets a little foot on the bottom of the and it just doesn't look as pretty. Now, you don't need to be too concerned with air bubbles in this first dip, because again, this is a, it has an oil in it, so as it warms up inside, it may uh, weep a little bit, so you want to, you need to put two, two coatings of chocolate on these. And right now, when we scrape the bottom with the fork to get it off, it is scraping some chocolate off. So you want to make sure that's all covered up. We're also going to put a little design on these as well. Whoops. That happens. Just fell off. Pick it back up. Earlier we were, or a few videos ago, we were talking about how is it that we, we, <laughs> we get more likes and views on our, our videos, which actually are doing fairly, fairly well. I think our first video has over 1,200 views right now, um, which is great. Our second video has about 1,100 views, and then our last one has about 700 views, I think. Somebody sent a photo of the shirtless chef, <laughs> and while <laughs> Dennis was like, oh, he's so hot. <laughs> and yes, while, you know, that 
he may get lots of people to his video. I, you know, we're trying to increase people <laughs> to watch. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, what if I start shirtless, and as our numbers go up, I'll put more clothes on. That might encourage more people to, <laughs> to watch us. <laughs> but thank you for the suggestion of the shirtless shirt. I will not be shirtless, but thank you. Okay. So you're just going to continue to dip your chocolates as, as you made them. And actually, you can all already see the, that this is satiny and this is still liquid and shiny. So these are already starting to harden. You should give them a little bit of time, let them harden up before you do your second, your second dip. Um, we are gonna make a little pastry bag while those are setting up because we're gonna add a nice little design to these. So what you wanna do is just take a piece of a parchment paper. These ones are already cut into nice little pseudo squares. You want to make a triangle. With your parchment. Sorry, I'm looking for a knife. I don't know. So we're going to use a knife that's way too big. Cut off the excess on the bottom here. Um, I'm also seeing the NDI thingy. Yeah, I can see that. it too. Oh, is that from oh NDI? What's that? That's the camera. The... Oh, that's the camera, folks. Sorry. Oh, is it in the way? All right, so you just take your parchment paper, fold it, uh, make it into a square, fold it in half, you want a triangle. And what we're doing here is we're making a pastry bag. I'm assuming most, a lot of people may not have one. It's really easy to do this. You can also, you can also just use a plastic bag, but you know, we're trying to not use as much plastic, so. So then you take your triangle, you're gonna take one end, you're gonna fold it up to the top. You're gonna to take your other one. Wait, did I do that right? No, no, I always get confused. No. Okay, here we go. Take one end, top end, this end, roll it around. And bring it up to the top there. Oops, this one above. Oh, you see, everyone saw that. Yeah, we know that the NDI thing is right in the middle. Sorry about that, folks. We'll try to uh, eliminate that for the next one. I'll try not to look on the table. Then you're going to take your other end, fold it around on the back side. So we have a nice little um, popcorn cone, I guess, if you will. So we've got one on the inside, we've got one on the outside, and then we have our middle triangle. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take them both and pull them to either side so that we get a nice little W here. And we have a nice little cone in the center. We fold it down, and this is going to help keep everything nice and tight. And then we're just going to make a notch in the bag and fold that down as well and that keeps it completely tight. Just fold that down. So now you have a makeshift pastry bag. We'll fill it with some chocolate and we'll throw it on there. We're just going to put this aside right now. All right, we're going to do our second dip on our chocolates. Oh, Margarita Green. Hey, Margarita, how are you? Oh, Scott. Hey, Scott. It's blocking the action. I know. I'm sorry. We're, we're, we'll work that for the next one. Okay. So this is why we have to do a second dip <laughs> on these chocolates, because this is where the fork, ah, 
This is where the fork came off of the uh, chocolate to get it onto the onto the um, tray. So you want to put this, the bottom side down because that's now going to become your top. Put it into the chocolate, squish it around, tap off all the excess. This is where you want to be a little more careful. Uh, and if you see some bubbles coming up to the top, you just want to get, you can give them a little poke. And then you can just give a little more tap. <laughs> the bottom and onto your tray. Move it back where it was so it's not. What? Move it that way. Move what, what way? No, I'm You're not. Huh? NDI is covering it. No, I'm over here now. Oh. Okay. What is that NDI, Dennis? It's the application that's running. Oh. Uh, Alright, our second one. Whoops. They touch, it's okay. Our third. Now, if your chocolate gets too thick and goopy, just zap it for like three seconds. Mix it up. You don't want to over zap it in the right way because you don't want to bring it out of temper. somewhere don't <laughs> and now we're gonna let these candies set up chocolate gets everywhere so here let me get a paper towel so these are the ones and we're gonna finish these off in a second but these are the ones that I did yesterday so we don't want to be in the middle of the NDI so these are the ones that we did yesterday. They've been dipped twice. We did a little decoration on the top of them. And we're just going to cut one open for you to show you how they look while those are setting up. We're going to do Olympic night. So uh, you can see the decoration. See now the bottom, it has that uh, what looks like the chocolate cider temper. This is actually just the coconut oil. Um, I had accidentally put it back onto the same parchment paper that had coconut oil from the other one. So, if you notice, this one I spun it around so that I'm using a clean side. If you don't have enough clean side, just make sure that you put on a new piece of parchment paper so you don't get coconut oil on the bottom and it doesn't and it won't look like that. And then there is our peppermint pie. Nice, beautiful white center, nice dark chocolate. Tastes wonderful, has a wonderful snap. Mmm. Minty fresh. Mm. It is good. It goes well with my mint martini, chocolate martini. Okay. So to get these little squiggly lines on our chocolates here, we're going to take our piping bag. Just to cut a hole in the bottom. Not yet. Don't cut a hole before you fill it. And you don't need to fill it a lot. Because if you did, it all of a sudden start running out. You can see a little bit, there is a little bit of spot there. You don't need a lot in here. Especially since we're only doing six right now. And there we go. Fold it over. Pick it up. I know. Mm -hmm. 
just cut a little bit off. Not a big hole. Let's see if I can do this over here. Oh, over here. I see. Let's see if I can do this over here. Back it up that way. Huh? Put back it back it towards you, yeah. What's that? Yeah. Okay. We're just going to take our little pastry bag. Easily squeeze. And we instantly have peppermint patties that you would not be able to get at a grocery store. Taste amazing, and you will totally impress your friends. That's about it. Uh, simple, you have all the ingredients, but buy them from us instead once we're up and running. <laughs> we're going to sell peppermint patties about this size in a two-pack like our cherries um, at different locations. We'll be selling them online. Again, as soon as we get the packaging, the labels and everything, we'll be good to go. Here in Spain, uh, in Citrus, we'll have a local place where that we'll be selling them. I just want that to be finalized before I say who it is. And then we'll be selling online for local free delivery here in Seiches. And then uh, right now, sorry folks in the U.S., right now delivery to Spain, anywhere on the, the peninsula. It doesn't include the islands right now. And as soon as we figure out our shipping thing, if anybody has uh, you know, shipping, we can't spend $60 on shipping for two candies, well, I wouldn't, <laughs> to the U.S., but if anybody has any better shipping options for us, uh, and as soon as we just uh, uh, investigate all of the shipping op options that we can do to the U.S., uh, we'll be opening up shipments uh, to the U.S. as well. So, without any further ado, Greg Stephan says yay. Um, thanks for moving the camera a bit. We can see the tipping action. Yay! Okay. Um, all right, remember, before this video goes off, you need to like and share, and you'll be entered into our drawing, and we'll give away the, uh, our sampler pack of our pillow chocolates. So wonderful seeing everybody. We'll have our combo video posted in a couple of days. You'll get a notice when that goes out. And that's it. Dennis, say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. We love you. Come on. Eat more.